Hello, here we are in Dublin, Ireland, outside the production offices for the upcoming documentary on the 1916 Easter Rising. In 1916, Irish Republicans staged a rebellion in an effort to end British rule in their country. 2016 marks the centenary, so to celebrate the 100th anniversary of this pivotal event in Irish history, the University of Notre Dame and Coco Television are creating a three-part documentary series directed by Pat Collins. This has been a huge project in the making for a couple years now, and we are very excited to show you the behind the scenes of this momentous production. Where are the interns? Get ready. In 1916, a small group of um, mainly intellectuals, poets, also workers, socialists, um, writers and, and suffragettes uh, had an armed uprising, an armed rebellion, where they took uh, control of uh, certain key areas, or key buildings in the centre of Dublin and held them against huge military odds for over a week. In, in a sense, in the, 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 their defeat, their military defeat, became a victory, certainly became a moral victory. The project was primarily funded by Notre Dame University, which is amazing because normally on these type of productions you're trying to get finance from a number of different sources and it makes it quite complex and it also means editorially you're trying to make about 17 financiers happy and they all want a different story told, so that is quite tricky. And it just means that you could see that production value on the screen. So I uh, approached Professor Christopher Fox, who is the director of the Keown Oxford Institute, and uh, he was 199% supportive. He was terribly supportive of the project from the, from the get-go. So with his support behind the project, we, uh, we pitched it to the university, we um, got the support of the university, uh, we got the support of our development office, and then we were able to approach our donors, ask our donors, uh, whether they would be interested in supporting such a project. And from the word go, one of the most, uh, one of the central planks of our project was our students, that our students would have a chance to participate as interns. As interns, we do a lot of different things around the office and on set just to make sure that production runs smoothly. They don't actually have us getting coffee as much as I expected, so it's actually a lot of office work. Interview, transcription, location scouting, um, some filing, photocopying, um, basically anything I can do to kind of help the production team. We make a lot of copies, we format the script. Um, basically anything they need us to do, we're around to do. Um, and especially for the pre-production period, we were doing a lot on the research end of things. Transcribe a lot of old interviews with people who survived through the 1916 uprising. We've been making appendices um, for the scripts and whatnot, so we go through and pick out all the little bits that have like historical references to um, things that people said and whatnot. Ultimately, everything is the kind of responsibility of the director. So that whatever, the, the finished film, even though it's it's a hugely collaborative enterprise, I think the director is kind of either given the kind of plaudits or is given the criticism if it doesn't if it doesn't work. Um, but in this particular one, because it's been um, written by Brina, you know, so it's different to what a normal documentary would be. So it's 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 very much a kind of um, this one is very much collaborative. I think I, I suppose I'm visualizing the script that she's working on. As a producer, your main responsibilities and my responsibilities on this project is to deliver a high quality three part documentary series on 1916. So what that means is you're working right through from the beginning, uh, preparing, putting your, bringing your crew together, the best crew you can find, managing the shoot schedule, being responsible ultimately that you don't go over budget, but also creatively and editorially making sure that what is on the scripts and what has been agreed to film is filmed. I thought having read the first script that the approach was very broad. I loved the fact that they were looking at it from a global perspective. 
Even though the Rising was centered in Dublin, and therefore so is the production, there were other areas around the world which were closely connected to the Easter Rising. That means that throughout the summer, some of the production staff is hidden the road. Shoots are taking place in Germany, France, England, America, and India. We interns are going to get to travel as well, going around different places in Ireland. As director of photography, Colm Hogan is responsible for all the camera work to make sure every shot looks amazing. Whether it's telling the rest of the crew where to set up lights for an interview or figuring out the best place to shoot a view of a cityscape, Colm's your man. Since Colm can't manage all the equipment on his own, he has assistant cameramen Roman Bugoski and Gabe Levy to help him out. As technical wizards with an eye for detail, they arrange the sets according to Colm and Pat's directions. Lights, camera, action. Let's not forget about capturing sound though, that's Bob Brennan's job. What good would a historical documentary be without a clear interview? With audio mixer and boom mic in hand, Bob makes sure to record everything necessary for the series to reach the audience's ears. But the film crew are only half the story. Inside the office, Ashling Ahmed and Sarah Power are also working hard to organize everything from finances to scripts to transportation. As production manager, Ashling is responsible for creating an airtight project schedule that Sarah, as production coordinator, helps implement. Of course, they're also in charge of keeping their interns busy. Uh, my favorite part about interning is kind of watching the other uh, production managers and um, directors and DPs in their element. Uh, I like watching people kind of thrive and, and what they know how to do when, and what they love to do. My favorite times have been when we're on set because I found it really fascinating just to kind of like talk to the different guys who are on the crew and kind of see their backgrounds and where they're coming from because they're really, they're from like all over, or they seem like it and they've had all sorts of like different crazy experiences and to see how they've all kind of come together for a project like this, um, it just really kind of fascinates me because I have no idea where I'm going to end up in the future. Um, I think my favorite part is having the privilege to work with so many talented people. Uh, they have a really great production crew and I love uh, picking their minds every time I'm on set and just learning how they got to where they are and uh, trying to put together the pieces as to where I'll end up. I really enjoyed the more research-based um, side of the internship. I really enjoyed like going through reading old documents, watching old interviews, and hearing people's first-hand accounts because that's something that you won't get today because it is a hundred years out. My hope for this production is that it will succeed. <laughs> I suppose what that means is that everyone involved in it uh, will have taken something from it. You know, they will have given a lot, and I hope they get something back. I think that the, the, my main hope is that uh, that it becomes a, a, kind of a definitive history of of the 1916 period on on film, and um, that it's something that we could be used in 20 years' time even for educational purposes. Uh, I hope to take away from the summer the kind of ability to adapt to a lot of different work environments and uh, kind of strengthen my skills in the production areas. The knowledge that I can do, what I see these people doing, um, if they handed me all the equipment and stuff and said, okay, go, go make something like this right now. I hope to learn more about Ireland. Um, I've spent a significant amount of time here, but uh, I feel like I'm getting to know it in a different way through this internship and I just hope I continue to do that. Through this internship this summer I really hope to um, learn more about how a production works and uh, how everything comes together to make something great for the screen. As you can see many people are involved in a production like this and everyone's job is extremely important to the process. The amazing story of 1916 will be brought to the screen to pay tribute to the centenary and it is no small task as it will be archived for future generations to recognize the importance of this critical event. Thanks for joining us in our behind the scenes look of the 1916 Easter Rising and make sure to keep an eye out for its premiere on PBS and RTE in 2016.